Let's talk about a hamstring injury or hamstring strain. I'm Dr. David, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine expert. As a team doctor for a pro soccer team, I had to deal with hamstring injuries a lot as the doctor taking care of the athletes. But it's also common not just at the pro level, but at the high school level, the college level, and adults that just like to play sports and love to exercise. I actually injured my hamstring a long time ago doing P90X, and I was out of exercise, or at least lower body exercise, for nine weeks. So I know how difficult it can be. Let's talk a little bit about it. The hamstrings are the muscles in the back of the thigh. They're very powerful muscles and they're very often injured with sprinting. So you're like in soccer, you're standing still and all of a sudden you take off on a sprint. Or it can be an awkward motion where you're, you're basically your hamstrings are firing as your hip is lengthening. So things like awkward lunges, things like that can do it. But it's very, very uh, common and it's very painful. Now you can injure it in the middle of the thigh in the muscle belly or you can injure it closer to your buttock where the tendon attaches up to your sit bone. That one, just so you know, is a lot more difficult. That takes a lot longer to heal. Occasionally, actually, that tendon can pull a little piece of bone off the sit bone or pull the tendon off a of bone, and that sometimes in a high-level athlete actually needs surgery. But most of the time, we're talking about an injury to the muscle belly or the junction between the muscle fibers and the tendon, and that typically heals on its own. Now, on exam, you know, the doctor, and you may notice this, a lot of bruising in the back of your thigh, obviously pain in the back of your thigh, difficulty walking, swelling, all those kinds of things. The physician can do a lot of exam tests to really figure out this is what's going on. Usually you don't need x-rays unless it's to look to see if you pulled the tendon off of the sit bone. So sometimes they may get hip or pelvic x-rays, but most of the time an x-ray is going to be normal because it's not a bony injury. In high level athletes, sometimes we'll get an MRI to look at exactly where the injury is and is it just a strain or a partial tear of the muscle or a complete tear because at the pro level, we really need to know how long they're going to be out so the team can know if they need to sign another player or get a substitute ready, that kind of thing. It can also be helpful to see if you really did pull the tendon off a of bone. So that's how you make the diagnosis. As far as treatment goes, the vast majority of hamstring injuries don't need surgery. The only ones that typically do are when you pull the tendon off of the bone, the sit bone, and that's again fairly rare. Most of these can get better with rest and time and avoiding whatever sport or exercise that causes the pain. That's a good first start. But that can take a long time just waiting on time. So sometimes working with a physical therapist who can do ultrasound or e-stem and do exercises to gently strengthen that, uh, that body part, to work on you know, low intensity cardio, maybe stationary bike and that kind of thing, to start getting some cardiovascular fitness and start working the quads a little bit. And to, you know, then when you get to the point where it's really healed, then maybe you start jogging and sports specific activities. This can range anywhere from a couple days to a few weeks to sometimes a couple of months. I told you mine was about nine weeks. The other problem with a hamstring injury is that there's an, a chance that you could re-injure it. We think that happens about twice as often as somebody that's never that's had a hamstring injury compared to somebody that's never had one. You're twice as likely to suffer a second one than somebody that's never had a hamstring injury in the first place. So you want to make 100% sure that it's completely healed before you try to go back to sports and working with a physical therapist can be a great way to do that. I hope this was helpful. Click the video for below for much more helpful information and I'll see you right here next time.